story we're going to read is called Danza, and it's about Amelia Hernandez Ballet Flocorico de Mexico, which is the most famous dance company in Mexico. The company has received more than 200 awards and has performed in more than 80 countries. All right, so let's read the book and find out a little bit more about this dance company. It's called Danza. All right, Amelia Hernandez was born in Mexico City in 1917, and everybody assumed she would become a school teacher like her mother and her grandmother. Even Ami, as everybody called her, expected that. But one afternoon while her family was on vacation, Ami saw a pair of dancers in the town square. They stomped and swayed to the live music. The danzas that they performed had been danced by people of that area for generations. Ami was hooked. She made a decision. She was going to become a dancer herself. And that's Ami and the dancers. Let's see what happens next. Ami twirled in the living room and whirled in the kitchen. Amelia scolded her father, a stern military man. But her mother encouraged Ami's interest in the arts. And one day her father gave in. He, had, he even had a studio built in their home and hired the best dancers he could find. After school, Ami studied ballet with Madame Debray, who had danced with the Paris Opera, and with Professor Simbin, who had danced with the Polvas world-renowned Russian ballet. Maybe she had pretty awesome teachers. So let's see. Ami worked on her technique and made sure she always pointed her feet. She perfected the different structured positions and became an accomplished ballerina. In 1939, two dancers from, Mex from the United States visited Mexico City, where Ami lived. They performed a new style of dance called modern. Amelia was deeply impressed. The movements were expressive, and they could be jarring when compared with the delicate movements of ballet. So it looks like she was inspired when she saw two people to a different kind of dance. Ami met Waldine, one of the modern dancers, and began to study with her. She also continued de practicing ballet. Ami was very talented and disciplined. In time, she became a dance teacher and a choreographer herself. A choreographer is a person who creates dance steps and arranges them together to create new dance pieces. In 1952, after rehearsing for months, Ami and other dancers gave a performance. They presented many different dances, but the one that the audience clapped for the most was a piece called Sones de Michoacán. Ami was the choreographer, and the dance was similar to the original danza that she had seen in the town square when she was a little girl. Ami had an idea. She decided that she would create ballets based on the Flocorico danzas from the different regions of Mexico. She was so excited that she formed her own company with seven other dancers. Ami began to travel to villages all around the country to learn as much as she could about the area's traditional dances. She read about the history of each place and talked with the elders. When possible, she participated in the danzas herself. She paid special attention to the steps, the music, and the outfits that the people wore. So every part of Mexico has different types of dance. So she's going, traveling, and learning all she can. After returning home, Ami would go to the dance studio. The danzas and bailes she saw in the villages were for ceremonial purposes, like celebrating a patron saint or hoping for a good harvest. Other times, the dances happened so people would have fun and meet new friends. However, the dance pieces Ami was creating were meant, to, were meant to be performances for audiences to watch in a theater. Ami used her skills as a choreographer and her knowledge of both ballet and modern dance to make the pieces innovative and beautiful. She made sure the dancers were, wore dazzling costumes and that there was dramatic lighting and spectacular backdrops. Backdrop is um, the back of the, the theater. Ooh. Audiences loved the Flocorico ballets, and Amelia's dance company quickly became very famous. In 1954, they performed on the Función de Gala television show. 
They danced on the show every week for more than 60 weeks. The company grew to include 20 dancers and then 50. So remember, she started with seven dancers and then 20, and then it grew to 50 dancers. The company's repertoire, that means all the types of dances, included ballets based on mesti mestizo, bailes like the sono sonsones watch watchos from Veracruz. Mestizo is the combination of Armenian, European, and African tradi traditions. In ballet, musicians dressed in white played the harp and guitars as the dancers stomped on a tiramba. The company's repertoire also included, included ballets based on indig indigenous dances, like the Danza del Venado from the Yuki in the Sonora Desert, and Los Quetzales from the Nahuas and to Totonaco people in the Valley of Mexico. So she studied all the different types. Some of the company's ballets were not based on traditional dances, but were original pieces inspired by Mexico's pre-Columbian past. Ami wanted to celebrate the history of her country. She looked at the sculptures and the art the ancient civilizations like the Aztecs and the Maya had created. She conceived dance steps for ballets like the Gran Te Tecnochitlan based on the art. And she also looked at art to make dances. Pretty cool. Some ballets were inspired by more recent history and by music like the polka and the waltz, which were popular with the wealthy in the 19th century. Or by the corridos, which were popular with the poor at the beginning of the 20th century. Ami would often dance as Juana Gallo, a fierce female soldier of the time. The company became a great success, not only in Mexico, but abroad, too. In 1959, the Mexican government asked it to represent Mexico in the Pan-American Games. These games were simpler were similar to the Olympics, but only athletes from the Americas compete. It was a great honor to be part of such an important event. That year, Ami decided to call the company El Ballet Flocorico de Mexico, Mexico's Flocoric Ballet. The company became truly international in 1961 when it won its first prize at the prestigious Festival of Nations in Paris. Famous ballets and important dance troops from all over the world competed at the event. After the Flo Flocoric Ballet won, it was invited to tour in Europe. Later, it visited Japan and Australia. The dancers even performed next to the Great Sphinx in Egypt. Wow, they traveled all over the world. To be touring around was exciting for Ami, but it was not simple to arrange. The company needed transportation for 50 or so dancers, musicians, sound and lighting technicians, and more than three tons of costumes. Ami decided to stop dancing so she could focus on the choreography and directing the company. So she was now like a general, much like her military father, supervising all the different people involved in the flocoric ballet and making sure that the shows came out perfectly. The company had so many engagements that Ami had to create two groups, one to travel around the world and one to offer performances in Mexico. Wow, her company grew so big. In 1968, Ami opened a dance school. Her brother, who was an architect, designed the building, which housed studios and classrooms. At the school, students could learn flocorico dance and also ballet and modern dance. Often the dancers who studied at the school became professionals in Amelia's company. As the years passed, Ami continued teaching and supervising the Flocorico Ballet's rehearsals. She had become a school teacher after all, like her mother and her grandmother. Oh, well, I met her. She's older now. Amelia Hernandez passed away on November 5, 2000, but her legacy lives on. El Ballet Flocorico de Mexico performs every Wednesday and Saturday at the Palacio de Bellas Artes, the Palace of Fine Arts in Mexico City. They have been doing so without interruption for more than 50 years.
The company also continues to tour internationally. Today, there are thousands of Mexican Flocorico dance groups, both professional and amateur, in Mexico and the United States. Perhaps you've seen one perform at your school, or in your neighborhood, or El Cinco de Mayo. Maybe you've even dressed up as a charro and danced El Jarabe da Patio. I know I have. Ami inspired generations of dancers to perform these danzas. She made, she made the Flocorico dances of Mexico known around the world, and she encouraged people of Mexico of Mexican origin to feel pride in their roots and in the traditional dances. Dances. The end. Pretty amazing, eh?